Hello and welcome to part one of Alpine Composition. Uh, part one is blocking and in this 30 minute segment we covered the whole canvas with paint. So um, I think I've done everything that I can possibly do to get this thing based right. So I've got a foundation and that's the whole thing we're trying to do today. The values are pretty close. The color is a little wonky still, but uh, all we need is a good base. Um, values. So make sure you get your darks dark enough and your lights light enough, for instance, up in the sky. All right. Um, I don't think there's anything really too technically difficult in this step, so this should be an easy one to get through, hopefully. All right, so get outside and paint. Paint with your friends. Paint from life as much as you can. Even in the wintertime, you can do portrait or still lifes, but painting from life is a big deal. I paint from my monitor because this uh, series that I provide for you is how to um, find ways to resolve some of the compositional problems and technique problems that come along with landscape painting. So, it does not at all replace uh, getting outside and painting from nature. Nature is your best teacher. All right, that's it for me. Let's get to today's painting. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hello, and welcome to a new series. This is part one. Oh, my goodness. Um, Alpine Camp of Alpine Composition. Alpine Composition is uh, up in Rocky Mountain National Park, and uh, wow, what a composition. There's so much going on here, I thought I'd, you know, um, I think I got a, a 12 by 16 or 18 here. I've got canvas on a gator board, and um, as you can see, I did a little sketch. Sketches are very, very important to do want to introduce and encourage you to do these things. It just starts your brain going and kind of figuring out where certain things, is it below center, above center, and start thinking composition. This is a great composition. There's a lot going on. But I am going to make one change. As you can see when I did my sketch, I put this mountain that is kind of going along, you know, a parallel with the other mountain, I'm going to move it over here, and so we'll have a more centralized area of light. So that's what I'm going to be thinking about doing, and um, probably the only major change that I'm going to make in this painting. Well, I've got my blues, my reds, two blues, two reds, my, what, one, two, three, four, five warms, and my uh, transparent oxide red, transparent oxide brown. Of course, my old reliables, cold gray and a viridian over here. Titanium in the lower right, my old trusty uh, guys here, my palette knives, and uh, oh, something that can soften some edges, and a slew of brushes, mostly rosemary and da Vinci's. What I want to do today is cover this whole canvas in paint in the next 30 minutes to have some sort of resemblance of where the basic values are going to be, my darks and my lights, with some basic value color. That's the main thing I want to try to get to today and uh, not get free out. It's not going to be that hard. I'm hoping, hoping, hoping. Yeah, there's a lot going on, so I'm going to have to do some off camera in uh, part one and two because of the repetitiveness of the work. I will introduce what I'm doing, like darkening all the trees. And um, I probably won't finish all of it on camera. You and I can finish it off camera. So let's kind of figure out, starting right now, where these basic shapes are going to be. So let's go with blue, transparent oxide brown, brown, brown.
Remember just a few weeks ago how clean my palette was? Now look, it's just got it sloppy. Jeez, what am I thinking? So I'm going to go in with some sort of a stiffer deal. I have a number two rosemary um, classic long flat number two. It's just going to be it's got some sort of stiffness. It can kind of figure out where these different things are going to be. But one thing I want to try to do is figure out where my, you know, some sort of a foundation line where I can build up and down from. And I chose the edge of the lake, which it looks to me like it's below center. And what I'm going to do is put a dot where center is right there. If you want to measure your center, you come in with a brush and you go, okay, that's that, and that's that. So it should be equal on either side. So below center is going to be this lake line or this dark line. I don't know, somewhere, in there. and then it kind of goes this way. And then there's a bank of trees that comes in here somewhere. So you can see I'm already starting to build up and all that kind of stuff. Now somewhere around center, maybe a little left of center, one of the banks begins. That's not very good, but that's a good start, though. And I'll elongate some of these fellas. I think this is a little bit more this way. And I'm going to choose the line by darkening what I think is the correct one. I think there's another lake right above it, a little lake above it, a little pond here. I like how this kind of balances out this space over here. And there's a big old hunk of rock, I think, right here. And it's got dark edges on it, dark edges on it. Now over here, about this point right above it, is a Kind of a shadow color. Everything's kind of dark over here. Alrighty, so that is that. Let's get up into the upper part of the painting. And I think over here we have big hunkin guy come down here to over to above this little pond area here let me get a little bit of gamsol in here to get some And then I'm going to put a mountain that's going to kind of go like this over here. So I kind of reverse the side of that mountain just to kind of give it a little balance here. All right. I mean, nature is perfect enough, but I'm sure I can screw it up. Let's see. Give nature some credit, as they say. And there's a bunch of rocks. I think. There's a bunch of dark in here. I 
basically there's a angle going here and then big dark something here. Okay, I've got trees on the left and I'm going to do a little bit of redesign there on the left. I'm going to add more brown to this mixture. A little bit of yellow ochre. And I'm going to put a leaning tree. I'm famous for leaning trees on banks. And then there's going to be other trees. And more trees. Maybe a space. And more tree. And I'll just make this whole tree over here. All right, so that is my basic design. This is really important to take time and make sure you're in the right place. Okay, this is below center. I see that, and I see a d kind of a dark going off into there, and I'm good with that. And I see a dark in here also, kind of snaking out, some sort of water thing going off here. <clears throat> okay, time to switch brushes. overtime on this. So as I'm doing this, I'm walking the different angles around my canvas behind it. Not only getting back, but going to one side or the other, sipping my coffee and seeing, okay, is this working? And so far, so good. So I'm going to switch now to my mop brush which is a number eight rosemary long filbert series 278. I'm going to get some turp in that guy. Oh, I should probably make more product, more mixture. And start thinking about where these major dark eyes are going to be. This is kind of a little bit like uh, watercolor. So this is basically ultra blue, transparent oxide brown. Then not too bad pine trees. At least we know where they're going to be. And there's a bunch of dark down in here, too. I'm going to thin this up just a little bit and add a little bit of viridian to it. And as you can see, in quick order, you can figure out where the water in shadow is going to be. And I think I need some shadow on the banks. And I need some shadow on the upper side of the little ponds there. All right, time for a little bit slightly different mixture. So I'm going to get some more Ultra and a transparent oxide brown and yellow ochre. Yellow ochre. I'm going to try to unify this pile here a little bit. And I certainly don't have enough to 
get down the road. So I'm going to go more transparent oxide red, more yellow ochre. All right, try to get the stuff off both sides of my brush, and we'll get into the trees. Come on, getting my paper towels, cleaning my my knife. I do a lot of mixing with my T7. All right, um, I'm going to dip this into my Gamsol, clean it up a little bit. Go back into here and. Just a little bit more turp. Damn so, I'm sorry. This is a little different over here. Okay, so we are 13 minutes into this from my calculation. Oops, get out of the bag. Just laying down some good background base colors to this canvas. I want to, as I say, try to cover this thing up with value color. I'm going to add a little bit more gray to this, a touch of white, and I'm going to. More of a gray, green, something or other over here. Let me uh, soften some of these edges here a little bit. And I'm choosing the angle by what these trees are, their verticals. Just to keep things on the straight and narrow. I'm going to move this mixture over and start I think in the rock area so I'm going to go gray white gray oh I switched over to a number three rosemary long flat 279 and I'm gonna put some gray in specific areas and now I'm gonna darken it up darken it up with more gray and add the upper layer a darker gray Better get some, just a little bit more Gamsol in here to make that flow. Trying to work around the trees a little bit without getting too much contamination in there. And I think we need some darks that come over this way just a little bit. I think I was a little too generous with rock area. So you can eventually do some treetops here eventually. But that's too soon. That's detailed. I don't want to work about detail yet. All right. Let's work on greens. So I have this gray, I might as well work with it. Let's go with uh, blue, ultra, yellow ochre, and Hansa, yellow, deep. It's 
not green enough. Let me add a little bit of meridian to it. And lighten it up with some white. Let's see. Good stuff. Okay. Let's go back to the mop. And see, I'm not exactly panicking. I'm just moving briskly to try to get this stuff in the right place. Add more white. More white. And if you don't like it, just thin it down a little bit. we will work over it. There we go. That's a little bit more to my liking. When I come back tomorrow, this will probably all be dry. Or pretty close to it. If I was working outside, I'd be using pure turp, turpentine from the hardware store. And it would be dry within minutes. That stuff is really deadly and it's unhealthy for you, but it sure helps when you're outside to get things done quick. I know you're seeing rocks and all kinds of fallen trees here and you're going to go, what in, how is he going to get all that stuff in there? Just want to get a basic value color down here. And I'm going to gray this down just a little bit. I had some cold gray by Remington. It's probably a little too nasty. Let me get a little yellow in here. Ooh, that's a nice color. corners. Mm, man, this is looking all right. I'm going to work this angle with this softening brush I have. a little bit. And I've got some whites down here, so I'm just going to scribble and undefine these edges a little bit. Okay. move this stuff out of the way and there's hardly any left I'm just going to pick it up I'm trying to get a nice mixing area for yawn mountain so we'll go white ultra blue little gray blue Some of that nasty green we had for the trees in here. And thoroughly mix my, my pile here. And I'm going back to the mop, cleaning it up a little bit. Checking my time, and I think we're doing pretty good. So let's go with a little bit of Gamsol in the mixture 
And I have some contamination in the brush and it's probably going to show up a little bit, but not too bad. And I see some gray down in here too, so it's just, I'll slop that in there a little bit. That's working. And I will soften these grays here a little bit because you can see some kind of bleeding into this area right here. And for the water, I'm going to go a little bit more gray. blue and that's too dark. I'm going to even lighten it. There's two ways I can lighten it. One is add white which is going to slow up the drying time or just run it you know, run a paper towel through it and that lightens it too. It's okay for this stage. Yeah, I'm using all kinds of different sides of the brush. I just dipped into Gamsol here to keep this thing flowing. And I see some in-between area, kind of... I just ran my brush into the swap pile from this, these colors up above. A little bit more blue to that. There's kind of a dark gray over here. So I'm going to the slot pile plus gray. A little bit more blue. Brown. Brown. <gasps> too much brown. Darn it. I went too far. Great. Great. And now a little bit of brown. And not getting much gray over there, darn it. But we got a dark value in here. We'll have to come back later with that gray. I think I need darker stuff here, value wise, and that's what I just did. I'm going to get some green in there too. Viridian, yellow ochre, yellow ochre, blue, a little bit of brown. Let's see if this darkens up this area nicely. Ooh, that's nice. I did the trick. Let me get back and take a look. I've been sucked into this thing too close. And from back here, it's working. It's working. But I do need darker darks in many places. So let's see what I can do about that. And we will I'll introduce what to do with the sky here. And then you can do that. So I'm going to introduce how to make darker. So I'm going to go brown, blue. Viridian, brown, brown, a 
And I think there's a big old hunk of tree over here that's going to help us. But I need some darks. Need a little bit more brown in there. A little bit more brown. Skitter around in the rocks a little bit to show there's some pretty, even darker stuff than what we got there. Reinforce some of the trees. Just looking at shapes and darks and lights and lobbing everything in there. I think this is going uphill a little bit and I need to, <coughs> excuse me, lower it. Brown, blue, viridian, gamsol. And let's lower this a little bit. Okay, that is coming along. accomplished what I wanted to do, but I haven't got the sky in, and I haven't softened my edges, and I need time to do that, particularly where I see white canvas coming through. I just run this thing around it. Just bring these edges. up here to some ultra blue white I just want a lighter gray blue in here so I'll go back to my mop I'll clean it up a little bit just want a base color in there real thin thin too dark and add a little bit of Hansa Yellow Deep, just a little bit for warmth. Oh, that's a pretty color. Thin. Thin, kind of a gray, a touch of green tint to it. And how am I doing? I gotta bring this to an end, darn it. Anyway, I'll finish this off and I'll soften it with my softening brush and call this part one done. Thanks so much for coming by and I'll see you next in part two.